there's a number of steps that we believe need to be taken to end or at least greatly reduce uh, the abuse of science and policymaking. One would be to adopt stronger conflict of interest guidelines for federal advisory committees and ensure that all federal agencies adhere to those guidelines when selecting and appointing uh, members of federal advisory committees. Uh, we believe that there ought to be a prohibition on asking scientists being considered for science and technology advisory committees what their political affiliation is or who they voted for. And our research has documented a number of instances in which that has happened. We just think that's totally inappropriate. Uh, we think there ought to be protections for scientists inside federal agencies. Uh, right now, if a scientist is asked to do something that violates his or her ethical code of conduct as a scientist, in most cases, they're not protected by the Whistleblower Protection Act. And so we think there ought to be ombudspeople set up in agencies that have a significant science and technology component uh, to provide sort of a court of opinion for a scientist to go to if they feel they're being pressured by their political superior uh, to distort science, to suppress science, to censor science. Uh, we believe there also ought to be protections for scientists in terms of which conferences they can attend, uh, what papers they can publish, uh, who they can speak to. Uh, recently we've seen uh, instances where the Department of Health and Human Services has tried to tr crack down on which scientists can attend uh, scientific meetings of the World Health Organization, for example, uh, trying to select only scientists that they think will adhere to administration policy rather than providing their best independent advice and judgment. Uh, that ought to be prohibited. Uh, there's also a, a need to, I think, restructure and strengthen uh, the role of the director of the Office of Science and Technology Policy. In past administrations, that person has been the science advisor to the president and a special assistant to the president and has had access to the president and the highest councils of government. In this administration, uh, that has not been the case. Uh, Dr. Margberger is a very respected uh, physicist and, and member of the scientific community. Uh, but he hasn't had the kind of clout that past science advisors have had and therefore the ability to weigh in on some of these abuses and try to halt them. So we think there's a whole range of reforms that ought to be explored seriously by the next administration and Congress to put an end to these kind of abuses and UCS and our partners in the coalition of groups, the Integrity of Science Working Group, are actively exploring uh, those reforms right now. I would hope that American citizens should demand of their politicians, first, transparency, that the reason people are appointed to committees becomes clear, their affiliations becomes clear. But also, I would want political officials to say, I will listen to the scientists and I will make my decision respecting the science. Not that the science will drive the decision, but that I want an open discussion with the American people about what the science says and what we should do about it. You know, I don't see Congress legislating science. I think having a central body vote on you know, what is good science and what's bad science is a disaster. It's what the Soviet Politburo used to do, and it's certainly not something we would want to replicate. I think the role of Congress has to be to make sure federal agencies can use the best scientists, can hire the best scientists, can make sure, that to, can retain the best scientists, because what's going on now is scientists across the agencies are feeling very beleaguered, they're being told they can't speak publicly, they can't go to international meetings and speak as a scientist. They're being told if they go to an international meeting, they have to go as a representative of the U.S. government and its policies, which again is antithetical to the progress of science. I went to the scientific meetings in the 1970s and there were representatives there from the Soviet Union and we knew they weren't there as scientists, they were there as political commissars. What we have to do is make sure that the, both the scientists who the government brings in for advice and the scientists who the government employs have the freedom to speak as scientists and not be muzzled. It's absolutely critical for um, the public to require the use of unbiased scientific advisory committees in decision making both at the federal level and at local and state level, and importantly that any report by a 
Science Advisory Board be public. There should be no private reports to decision makers. People can get out the fact that, that current governmental officials, both, and this is not unique to the, the federal government, this is occurring right now in the state of Ohio, I'm working on a project, um, and it occurs, I'm sure, across the country. Make sure the public is aware of those circumstances when their elected officials don't listen to science, don't listen to cold hard facts, and make judgments based on either political considerations, you know, who made the contribution, or other personal philosophies. So step one is to get that information out to the voters, and step two is to have voters hold these folks accountable. Well, by sort of coloring the science, by, by not fully and accurately representing the, the scientific information that's come, coming forth, we're basically as a country hesitating uh, on moving forward and getting started with addressing the climate change issue. It's a little bit like uh, trying, the, the challenge of climate change is a bit like a retirement account, building a retirement account. Um, it's best if you get started early and then you benefit from compounding over time. Um, what's happening now is a, a lot of wavering about should I get started? Is it best to get started now? And there's this notion, well, I'll wait till I have that much better job out there in the future, till I have this much better energy system that will make it easier. And we're going to just keep putting it off and putting it off. Well, we know from the experience of building up a retirement account, start early and don't wait till the end and think that you're going to have some sort of windfall at the end where you, where you can build it up because all kinds of other things can happen. So what we really need to do is get started on what we're doing and start working harder and harder and benefit from the, the ingenuity of getting on a different path and doing different things. Uh, but because we're sort of focused on uh, some of these uncertainties about the issues that keep getting raised because we're saying, well, we're just not sure enough uh, we're, we're just postponing and making life more difficult for ourselves.